Hi, Achim here from Innerspace Explorers. Today we want to talk about Frankenstein regulators, at least that's what I call them. So regulators that are assembled from different parts from different manufacturers. So let's say a Scobro first stage, a Maris second stage, a Cressy octopus, something like that. And before we get into that, first of all, if you like my content, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And uh, at the same time, I wanted to show you something uh, because actually in the last couple of months, I get more and more mail from people following this channel, and obviously from my patrons. And uh, that always makes me super happy. And uh, a lot of time it's uh, small things and I'm not talking about it on the channel. But I received quite a few postcards now over the holiday season, uh, so classic paper, um, which I thought super cool. The last one was from a couple, Michael and Tina, they went to Grenada and they sent me a postcard from there saying that they really appreciated the um, recommendation because there was a video somewhere where I was talking about the centers, dive centers in the world that I really like and there was one in Grenada and they um, went there because of this video. And they did a dive on Bianca C. That's a pretty famous wreck sitting there. So in case you're interested, just uh, have a look at Google. And um, they had to make an open water ascent and uh, using SMB and spool. And they used the assembly from the video. And they kind of said uh, thank you uh, with this postcard. So obviously that always makes me super happy when I see that people really make use of the information on the videos and that it uh, helps people to um, have better dives, so to speak. So that's always great for me and I really appreciate that. And then uh, two days ago I received a parcel from somebody, a great surprise, um, and I wanted to show you that. Um, and um, that's from somebody in Germany um, who is a follower of this channel and he sent me this, uh, this dive tank and um, that's uh, Actually, he said, yeah, he, he knows that I'm collecting old dive gear and uh, he had that in the basement and I thought uh, I'm going to like it. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you, Peter. Really appreciate that. So that's an uh, old, uh, yeah, basically from the public safety divers, you would probably call it uh, it's, uh, Deutsche Lebensrettungsgesellschaft. And as you can see, there's no buoyancy compensator or anything. It's just this uh, very unique type of backplate or harness, whatever, and uh, it's this Traeger regulator, I've never seen anything like that before, so I mean also I'm collecting, I never saw this one, I couldn't find any type or anything on it, just this Traeger on it, that's actually working condition, uh, the SPG is here, there's a reserve here, so it's all in working condition, and uh, makes a great uh, addition to my collection, so thank you very much Peter, I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, now let's talk a little bit about Frankenstein regulators. Let me just put that down here. All right, so Frankenstein regulators. Um, I received a message from somebody who said he was on vacation and he saw somebody diving with uh, um, yeah, this Frankenstein setup and wanted to know if that's safe and what my thoughts are about it. And uh, I thought it's funny because like 20 years ago or so, um, I saw that pretty frequently that people assembled uh, regulators or regulator setups, including an octopus from different parts. And uh, thinking about it nowadays, I rarely see that. So let me know in the comments if uh, that's something that you see in your era a lot or if you maybe do it. Um, Regarding um, my thoughts, if that's uh, good or not good, the manufacturer would always say no, of course. And uh, the other question is, can you do that? Yeah, you can. Uh, as I said, I saw plenty of people doing it. And obviously it depends a little bit what you mix up. Um, so, for, I mean, the, the first thing obviously is, is the intermediate uh, pressure the same. So, for example, if you use an old Poseidon first stage, it sometimes have uh, intermediate pressures between 12 and 13 bars and put that with a, let's say, school or second stage that normally works with a, a input intermediate pressure of around nine bars. That's probably not the smartest idea. Um, on the other way around, uh, putting a Poseidon second stage like on a Mark II school or second stage is uh, first stage. Um, is also not uh, really good. It probably delivers really bad, uh, badly gas. And um, 
On the other hand, similar types of regulators. So for example, I don't want to put out any recommendations here, but for example, you take an atomic second stage and put it on a screwable first stage that uh, will work more or less flawlessly, most probably because it's a very similar regulator. Um, so you can do that. Um, and then obviously, I mean, especially with all the regulators, uh, the question is always is the amount of gas that delivers matching the amount of gas the other part can handle, stuff like that. So generally speaking, it can work, um, but I would not recommend it, obviously, uh, simply for liability reasons and also because you never really know um, unless you're super experienced and really into these things and really know a lot about the components that you're using. Uh, but like saving money, buying bits and pieces somewhere on the internet and then putting it somehow together, best was a couple of used and bad hoses and then doing uh, a dive with it is probably not the smartest idea. So obviously it also depends on the type of dive. I mean, if you just get a regulator together because you want to do something in the pool in two meters of water I mean yeah it will probably work I mean as long as you uh, as it's not free flowing or something and you can breathe on it uh, on the surface it will work in, in the pool but uh, then it's obviously a total different thing if you do a dive with something like that in the on 40 meters on a wreck or in a cave or something like that which probably you don't want to do and um, so for those of you who thought uh, there's coming the exact uh, plan of how to build something like that, it's, it's not the case. And as I said, I would, uh, if you ask me, should you do that? No, you shouldn't. Um, and it's interesting to watch that I actually cannot remember in the last couple of years that I saw somebody on a dive board or a dive center somewhere using something like that while it was pretty um, common back in the day. So actually when the question came in, I looked through a couple of old slides and uh, I saw um, some from a dive boat in Croatia where we've been diving like 20, 25 years ago and uh, there were quite a few in this picture where I was like, ah, okay, somebody added something. So it was pretty common practice like buying a whatever Morris regulator, a good one and then ah, I need an octopus and then buy a cheap octopus somewhere on eBay or whatever and put it on there. Uh, which also tells you a little bit about the mindset of that person. That's <laughs> the octopus, <laughs> who cares? Um, but uh, yeah, I haven't seen that for quite a while, but uh, maybe it's uh, still common in uh, some other areas. So let me know in the comment sections what your thoughts uh, or experiences uh, are with this. And if uh, probably in your region, if you're from somewhere else, uh, if this is something that you still see every day. And uh, if you have, for example, bad experiences with that, so you, like you have a mail function because you were using one of these Frankenstein rigs, then let me know as well, probably uh, good discussion. And uh, other than that, stay safe. See you in the next video and keep sending me cool stuff. Thank you. Bye-bye.